Welcome everyone and thank you very much for showing an interest in today's session with GAIN, GAIN which stands for Girls Are Investors and today we are joined with a charity that is set up by investment professionals to improve the gender diversity within the investment management industry and if you've heard of investing before or if you're completely brand new to what it is you're in the right place just to kind of we're here to just fill in some gaps of knowledge and just give a bit of a summary, a bit of an informal chat on what um, investment actually is. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be shared, um, sharing this time with Caroline. Um, so, yeah, Caroline, if you could just introduce yourself, please, and um, maybe just give the viewers a bit of an insight into what GAIN does. Of course. Thank you so much for organizing this, Manisha. It's brilliant. Um, so I'm Caroline. Uh, I, I work as an investor. That's my day job. Uh, I work as an investor at something called a venture capital fund. Um, so what I do is I invest in startups. Um, so venture capital funds can invest in startups of all kind of ranging levels of maturity. I invest in the very earliest phases of startups. So that's called precedence. So typically it's just when a company is getting started, maybe there's just a team and an idea. So obviously, as, as you may guess, um, very high risk, but also very high reward. Um, so that's what I do daytime. Um, the fund is called J12 Ventures and uh, we invest across Europe. I kind of split my time half Stockholm, half uh, London, where I'm from originally. Um, and then, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I'm also one of the co-founders of GAIN. Um, as you said, GAIN stands for Girls Are Investors. Our main mission is to improve the gender diversity in the investment management world. Sadly, today, um, it, the entry-level application rates into the industry stands at just around 20%. Uh, and our aim through our work at GAIN, which I'm sure we'll get into, is to get that number up from 20 to 50 uh, in due course. So we do that by organizing a wide range of different programs uh, for varying levels of um, kind of uh, student years um, and yeah we can get into that later but that's a little bit about what I do daytime and also what I do with with game. Awesome thank you I think um, we'll definitely touch on more opportunities that students can get involved in later as well but um, could you perhaps tell us a bit more about what does an investor actually do so you mentioned about your personal journey so if investing um, yeah well, what does an investor do? Sure um, I guess at a very high level um, investing is really the act of allocating something, typically money, uh, but it can also be, you know, your time and effort with the expectation of getting something in return. And typically that is a financial return. So again, um, and when you think about investing, you can think about investing both from a personal finance perspective. You can obviously be an investor and everyone should be an investor in their everyday personal life, even though it's not your profession. Uh, but you can also be an investor by profession like me. And then um, I mentioned that I work as a venture capital investor, which is investing in startups. But there's, of course, many other different types of investment firms out there. So you could be investing in things like publicly listed stocks uh, in companies. You could be investing in bonds, in real estate, in funds, um, in larger companies. There's really a whole range of variety of different things that you can invest in as an investor. And depending on which types of uh, companies or what type of asset that you're investing in, your role and the type of work that you do as an investor is going to vary massively. So something that I always try to kind of bust some myths around is the fact that you know an investor is kind of one person that only does one thing and you spend all your time in excel analyzing companies whereas in reality you know the investment world is so incredibly diverse so there's really something for everyone depending on your your type of personality and your interests but that's it at a very high level and how did you personally get into investing caroline was it something that you were interested in while you were at school any subjects that you did that kind of sparked an interest I think I always had a bit of a business interest. So I studied business and economics in Stockholm. Um, but I should also mention that I think that the options of what to study were way more limited in, in Stockholm than they were in the in the UK. My primary aim was kind of to go to a good school rather, rather than to study the, the perfect thing. Having said that, I think I always had a little bit of a business interest. I um, always had a keen interest in like making a good bargain, if that makes sense. Um, and there's many, many kind of silly ways that that displayed itself throughout my childhood. And kind of even when I started working, you know, I, I often tell the example of 
you know, I'd go to this vintage shop whenever they had a sale, know which things sold, uh, resold for like much higher value on eBay. And then I would buy them and resell them on eBay. And at the very simplest of, um, you know, levels, that is also kind of investing. So I, I think I always had that little urge to kind of do a good deal and, and find things that were, you know, of good, good value. But I didn't know that I wanted to be an investor. And my journey to where I am today is actually quite long so I've been working now for almost a decade um, I started off uh, in something called investment banking uh, which very much sounds like investing but it's actually not um, so investment um, banking is when you advise on on large transactions and uh, it's typically a, a good gateway into any type of investment jobs and we can get into various ways that you can get into it uh, a bit later, it has been the classic way, I would say, to get into uh, the world of investing. But I think that's really starting to change. And I see way more people now coming into my kind of role in venture capital by having worked at, you know, a startup instead and things like that. So that is definitely changing. But that was my kind of conventional role into it. And then I worked for uh, six years for another investment fund, it's actually a, a family office. And there I was investing in funds. So something, uh, once again, very, very different. So I think bottom line is also, even though I absolutely love what I do today, and I think I'll stay in this position for a very long time, there is such a diverse range of opportunities in the world of investing that it's really a you know, career for life that won't bore you. And you can change around, you can develop in a certain direction. So there's many different ways that you can take. Thank you. And is there anything particularly that fascinates you about your job or that you really enjoy about um, your job? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. Um, so I could I could make a very long list. But I think the number one thing is the people that I get to work with, both within my firm and truly exceptional people, but more than anything else, the people that I interact with every day. So that's in particular startup founders. Uh, and then other investors in the in the ecosystem because venture capital tends to be very kind of network driven. Um, so it's definitely a kind of team heavy um, industry. And um, more specifically, maybe digging down a bit on the on the people part and the and the startup founder part. I mean, if you take a step back, what I um, what I do or the people that I have the privilege of speaking with on a daily basis is people that are highly ambitious, super intelligent, um, but they also are on a mission to change the world. So they believe that the company that they are founding truly will have an impact on the world that we live in. It'll probably contribute to a better society in some way. Um, most often, you know, they're operating at the kind of cutting edge of technological in innovation, specifically for me, given I invest mostly in data and AI companies, which is obviously on, on everyone's mouth at the moment. Um, so I think the types of people that you need, the types of conversations that you have on a daily basis are just so incredibly inspiring. So that to me is my, my by far biggest um, driver um, to what makes me incredibly happy to go to the office every morning. Um, but there's obviously other adjacent things. So I touched on a few. Uh, one is, you know, simply the uh, the ability to be able to invest behind innovation and change the world. I think that's hugely rewarding and, and very interesting. Um, and then obviously um, the broader kind of network aspect, you know, you, you create not only kind of professional friendships, uh, but also personal friendships for life. Everyone's working together to, to make sure that these companies succeed. Um, which is very exciting. And then I would say also, uh, you know, from a pure financial perspective, uh, as I mentioned, what I do is very high risk, but it's also incredibly high reward if something like truly pays off. And I think that kind of the budding excitement that something could be really, really big um, that you backed from, from day one is hugely exciting. And I think that kind of links back to what you mentioned about having a bit more of that business-sided entrepreneurial spirit to kind of help with that job. Um, I think that kind of leads us quite well into our next question about the skills and traits that you believe would be um, kind of valuable in an industry like this. Yeah, sure. I think there's once again, no kind of set traits that make you a good investor. And um, 
the traits that you will need as a venture capital investor very much differs from if you're investing in, you know, bonds or if you're investing in public markets, uh, whether you have a short term approach or a long term approach, et cetera, et cetera. But um, some more common traits that I think are super important for all investors and particularly in my job, I would say the number one is curiosity and kind of a, a keen interest in continuing to, to learn. Um, so regardless of what type of company that you're you're backing, you have to make sure that you have a very good understanding of that company, the trends in the industry that it operates, um, and particularly where I play, you know, at the kind of forefront of innovation, that's always changing. Like something that was, you know, hugely transformative just a, a year back is now kind of yesterday's news. So you, you have to be a very keen learner who's always kind of reading, staying up to date on things. So I would say... That's the most important characteristic that I look personally for um, when we hire also. And then in addition to that, I would say you also have to have a good um, level of critical thinking. Um, obviously, everyone's, everyone has the ability to portray things pretty rosy. Um, and your, um, your role also as an investor to, is to be quite discerning and pull arguments apart and kind of try to get down to what is, what is really the truth. And then we've spoken a little bit about just the pure kind of personal aspect of the job. I think um, it's very important to, uh, you know, have good kind of interpersonal skills, uh, people judgment skills, networking skills, because it is really a, a people business. And then, of course, there is some level of like financial literacy that you need also to be able to be good at the job. Um, we obviously invest very early so there's less to analyze <laughs> um, there's you know uh, maybe not even a company website when we first invest whereas if you're investing in very mature businesses then uh, I bet you there's a lot of materials that you can analyze so for more, most investment jobs you you need to to have good kind of financial acumen but I think the most important thing to know about all these different skills is that these are not necessarily skills that you're born with. Um, there are skills that you can hone through many different types of experiences, through what you study, your work experiences. You can do it on your spare time, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, uh, yeah, um, if any of these characteristics don't fit you with you today. There's no, um, no reason that you can develop them in the future. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that um, it's like a bit two sided. So you do still have that interpersonal skills as well as more of like the technical knowledge. And um, as you mentioned, th that technical knowledge can be built up through time. So if anyone's watching this thinking that they don't study the subjects which are, you know, kind of finance related in any way, but are still interested in any sort of aspect of what we're talking about, it's something still definitely worth um, considering. Um, so could you maybe talk about the nature of your work so is it remote is it on the you know on site like how does that sort of work on a day-to-day -day basis sure um so i have a little bit of a special setup given um most of my colleagues are in stockholm uh, but we invest across europe and i also have you know a prior life a boyfriend and everything in london so to make it work we said you know, half, half Sweden, half half London. But that means when I'm in London, I'm a bit more more flexible and sometimes work from home like like today. Um, many of the meetings that I take, uh, because we invest across the whole of Europe um, for the sake of efficiency, are, are online, uh, which in the beginning I was a little bit skeptical towards given, you know, you're actually trying to create a real relationship with a person and you're trying to get to know who they are as a person online, but it actually works surprisingly well. Um, at the same time, I still really like to be, you know, part of a team, go to an office, have that kind of community feel with my colleagues. So I would say it's a, it's a very happy balance of a little bit of an office, a little bit of remote, 